my goal is to help women understand that they have all the power within themselves. You know, becoming a mother, it just opened my eyes to how powerful we are as women. Welcome to the Engineer Podcast. That's engineer with a J-E-N, because I'm your podcast host, Jen. This is your space to integrate your soul with your STEM career. The purpose of this platform is to teach stress STEMs how to have self-care, explain all the ways that STEM is spiritual, interview those who switched from STEM to a more soul-centered career field, and to document my decision in becoming a soul purpose life coach. Now follow me out of the fog and into your future. Let's listen in. Hello everybody! Welcome to the Engineer Podcast. Today's episode is an interview episode with Jess, who is a practicing mechanical engineer. She is also a mom of two and a birth coach. This episode is part of our From STEM to Soul Career series, but what I absolutely love in the uniqueness of this story is that Jess has not switched from engineering to full-time birth coaching. She has actually advocated for herself to work as a part-time engineer so that she could also focus her time and energy in being the mom that she wants to be and also in establishing the business it, the business that she's created as a birth coach. So what I love is that your soul career can look any way, shape, or form that fits you and who you are, and Jess is an example of that. So just to give you a small synopsis of what we talk about in this episode, the introduction in the beginning of the episode is really Jess explaining her educational background as an engineer and the current role that she holds, and then also advocating for working part-time and how she did that. Then a majority of the episode is really us discussing her personal birthing and pregnancy experiences and the dichotomy between the first traumatic experience that she had with her first child versus everything that she put in and did to leverage and ensure a beautiful, natural, physiological birth of her dreams for her second pregnancy. And um, that experience and her really owning and claiming and leading the type of experience that she would go through in her second pregnancy and her second birth um, is what led her to then become that coach for other women to recognize and know that they can also have a beautiful, loving, sacred type of experience within their own bodies when they are pregnant and when they birth. And honestly, like... I recorded this episode months and months and months ago, way before the current climate uh, around women's rights, women's bodies in the United States, and it just happened to be that I re- I decided to edit this episode at this moment in time, and it really is a topic in the forefront of women's mo- minds at this moment, so I really hope that you can anchor into the power of Jess's words and really recognize that you definitely and truly have the right to become a mother when you feel it is right for you. That's all I have to say on that. So if you resonate with Jess's story and if you resonate with the work that she offers, she has a one-on-one program that I'm linking in the show notes. She also has a website, YouTube, and Instagram. So I would suggest and invite you to go follow her if you like this episode and the topics that we go over together. So yes, why don't we go ahead and jump into the episode. Welcome to the Engineer Podcast. Today we have Jess. Jess, say hello. Hello, everybody. Hi. Nice to meet you, Jess. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Super excited. Yes, me too. I haven't (laughs) been on my podcast since I started as an engineer, which has been like a year and a half. So I'm a little nervous, but I'm excited (laughs) to be back. Yeah, that's awesome. I didn't even know you had a a podcast until I started listening to it the other day when you asked me to join. So and it's so good. It's so good. I love it. (laughs) Thank you. And thanks for accepting the invite to be on it. As soon as I saw, like when I came back to Instagram, it was like suggesting people it thought I knew. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you might know this person. And I like clicked your profile and I just loved it. And I wanted to know more. So you're so sweet. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. 
Uh, yeah, I actually started uh, following you when I first started my engineer to mommy um, page and super interested in all of your, the stuff that you had to say. So I'm so glad you. you're back. Well, I'm really excited to get started. I would love for you to just give like a brief introduction to the audience of who you are, where you're at in your engineering career and any of the additional information that they should know. Yeah. So hello. And first off, thanks so much for inviting me. I'm super excited to be here. Um, my name is Jess and I'm actually calling in from Northern California. Um, I'm a first generation immigrant. I came here to Northern California when I was eight years old and I'm also the oldest of five. Mm. I am the first in my family to go to college and I graduated with a mechanical engineering degree from a California State University here in California um, back in 2017. So it's been a while now. Wow. <laughs> crazy how time flies. I know. Oh, wow. I did not realize that you came to the United States at eight. So you yeah. are first, um, like in your family, the oldest two. So are you mm -hmm. the only engineer so far? <laughs> no, my younger sister, um, she's two years younger than me. She also graduated with a civil engineering degree. And my brother is about to graduate. One of my brothers, he's about to graduate from high school and he wants to study civil engineering as well. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna cool. have three engineers in the family. <laughs> oh, I love that. So why don't you tell us where you are, where you're at in your engineering career? So you graduated in 2017. And so let's go from there to now, 2022. Yeah, so I work in construction. I work for a construction management company here. And um, I manage the MEP trades that stands for mechanical, um, electrical plumbing, and also fire protection. Um, so I have a lot of fun with construction I'm in the field and you know, in the office, and it's just a great balance of the two. So I know that you recently advocated for yourself to work part time mm -hmm. as an engineer, and I would love for you to explain why you've made that decision and how you've come to that decision. Yeah, so with my first baby, I had him in, this, in December 2019. So I took off, took six months off from maternity leave. And then when I came back, I wanted to have part-time work because I was breastfeeding him and he was not taking the bottle. Mm. Um, so I was able to work for part-time for about a year. And that was great because, you know, and I was able to work um, from home a lot of the times too, because of, you know, the pandemic, the the opportunity presented itself that I was able to work from home. So that was because I was able to spend so much time with him, um, you know, in that very first year when they really need us so much. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I had my, my baby, my second baby, she's seven months old now. She, she was born in September, 2021. And um, I first had told my co my coworkers, my boss that I wanted to come back to work, you know, as soon as my maternity leave was over, which was six months. Mm -hmm. And I was going to do full time. And the reason why I said that was because I felt pressured to come back full time because I, I felt like I had already lost so much time with my first baby and then, you know, maternity leave uh, for six months and all of that. So I really wanted to get back into it because I felt pressured. Um, I wanted to, I started looking at how my son was growing so fast. He was, he's already two years old and that time flew by super fast. Like it's incredible. People tell you that they grow so fast and they actually do. <laughs> and I realized that, you know, I, my career could wait, could mm -hmm. wait, you know, a little longer. It's always going to be there for me. I can always go back into it, you know, as hard as I want to go. But seeing my babies grow up is not always going to be there, you know? Exactly. So that's, that definitely made me like really look into my reasons for what I was, why I was doing what I was doing. And yeah, I just decided, no, I'm going to do part time. And I just talked to my managers. I know, hey, like my babies are still really small. Um, my baby is breastfeeding and she also does not take a bottle. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> so turn with me. Yes. <laughs> So yeah. we actually got this question from an audience member when I advertised that I'd be interviewing you. So their question was, how exactly did you communicate this decision to your engineering firm and how did they receive it? Mm -hmm. And how did you navigate it? So like you said, you originally felt like you had this pressure, like you needed to prove that you were taking your career seriously. You already felt like you had taken quote unquote, too much time off or yes. whatever it was previously with your first child. And I know that you thought about coming back full time now that you've said that, but you ultimately made the decision, okay, actually it's going to be part time. So could you explain to us how the conversation went with your engineering firm and if they're supporting you in that decision? So I basically just had a, a meeting with my, with my supervisor and I let him know what was going on mm -hmm. and and he was completely okay he's told me you know like I totally understand I have babies of my own and it's completely fine with me you just have to check in with our upper manager so we recently had a meeting at a restaurant and um, the supervisor actually let me know that you know it's it's doable like the 30 hour work week that I want is doable mm -hmm. But they're gonna have to get a little creative on how, um, on the position that I'm going to be taking on, and it, that position might not be in the current project that I'm in. Okay. Which was a bit of a bummer for me because I, I really love this project that I'm that I'm on and I love the team, um, but I am willing to sacrifice a little bit yeah. so that I can have that 30 hour work week, and. The thing that made this whole process a lot easier is that there are a couple of women that have already paved the path for us in a mm -hmm. sense, and for me in a sense, that they um, have taken 30 hour work weeks because they wanna spend more time with their, with their kids. So um, that is a great thing about my um, company is that they do value work-life balance and they're willing to work with you. So yeah, I suggest you find a good company that values, um, that values. Okay, let's shout out this company. We want to know. Because <laughs> I know that's like a huge misconception that a lot of people have. They associate their STEM degree, their STEM career with not being able to have that balance. Mm -hmm. So it's really upgrading their belief about what being an engineer looks like. And I love that you said that you have women that all that have already been doing this mm -hmm. so you know it's available to you it's not yes. something that you have to believe in you already see it and it's mm -hmm. true um I also really loved about your mindset like something that I think um could really help a lot of people is understanding that there really is no right or wrong decision it's just which consequences are you most okay with so it was either yes. like work full time, but have the consequences of not being with your children at their early ages as much as you could be. And that could be a fine choice if you're okay with that consequence, or it could be, okay, having a reduced amount of hours with the consequence of maybe not having the exact projects that I would love to be on, but I rather go through that consequence than the latter. Exactly. So yes. I really appreciate the way that you navigated that decision and it just it shows what mindset that you're in so the next question that I want to ask is something that you mentioned in your survey is that you've always wanted to have babies young and so and like you had a little bit of conflict with that desire in your professional environment so I'd love to know how you got yourself through making that choice yeah so in so in my current job, my team, mm -hmm. um, there are a lot of younger people like me, um, younger people, <laughs> um, yeah. not, you know, I'm, I'm 27 years old, but I, you know, I had my first baby when I was 24. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it would seem, it seems young because not everybody's, it seems like everybody is waiting until later on in life to have kids, but I've always wanted babies ever since I was little, like I've always, you know, I, I, I always have loved kids. And it was like a really deep desire that 
and but I also had like a, this, you know, struggle because I wanted to get a little farther ahead in my career. Mm-hmm. But I think, I think we just, my husband and I, we just dove into it. Um, I'm the type of person that I kind of like, you know, I want something and I'll just dive into it before and, and then I'll trust myself. I'll, I trust myself mm-hmm. that I'll figure it out as I go. Um, that you know, happened with engineering, with my business, with every decision that I've made thus far. I feel like I've just trusted myself and just <laughs> I dive deep into it without like really thinking about it too much beforehand. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know if that answers the question. Yeah, I I think it does. It wasn't something that you like planned or was super strategic about. You just knew what you wanted and went for it, trusting that things will align because you have confidence in yourself and your ability to make those decisions as they come forward. And I think that's like a really great example for people to follow. You don't have to have it exactly planned out and overthink it. And it's really that element of self-trust that comes through your story. I know that like I've had so many conversations as a woman in engineering, as a Latina with my other friends where this is like a total thought that they overthink a lot. Like, ooh, I wanna be a mom, but I wanna be good as an engineer. I don't wanna wait till I'm like older. Is that gonna, like, should I do it now? Wait, but am I ready now? Could I do, like, there's so many question marks. And I think something for us to like recognize is there isn't always a level of certainty that you can get to before making a decision. The self-doubt can still be there and it can still be okay to move yeah. forward. Like you don't have yes. to be like a hundred percent sold to move forward. Um, so thank Exactly. You yeah. And you know, everybody's path is different. I feel like I was comparing myself to others too much. And now I'm definitely living my life more like more in tune with what I actually want. Yeah. And like, like one of my mantras right now is like, okay, I'm, I'm living my best life. And what does my best life look like right now? And um, how can I live my best life right now? <laughs> Not waiting until, you know, later on when I have gotten that goal that I've been wanting or, or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people mess up the order. It's like be, do, have. So you have to be who you want now and act as that person and then you'll have it like a lot of people think you have to have it first to be that person so I I like that like embodiment work Mm -hmm. um so I know you've kind of mentioned it a couple times but let's dive into your business so you are still currently an engineer and you are a birth coach and Mm -hmm. You should just go off with that. Let's talk about what that is, why you um, became a birth coach, and what exactly a birth coach does. Okay. Um, So when I had my first baby, um, I thought I was prepared. I, you know, went to the hospital, um, like the hospital education classes that they they do. Mm -hmm. I also bought a course online. I watched a bunch of like YouTube videos on on birth. Like I thought I was prepared, right? And I also decided that I wanted to have a home birth with my first baby. So I hired a midwife, but I was still not quite sure if I was going to be able to birth my baby naturally. I didn't have full trust that my body was going to be able to do it because, you know, you you have so many years of conditioning about how painful birth is, how difficult it is. Stories that have planted in your subconscious. Yes. All movies that we watch, right. They always depict women like having this excruciating pain. It's just horrible. Right. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I'm going to have the home. I'm going to have a midwife. I'm going to have my home birth, but Also, I want to have my OBGYN. So I was seeing an OBGYN and a midwife. Okay. um, Just in case. (laughs) That was the plan. Um, So I was going to like double the appointments, double the everything. Um, And my pregnancy went fine. It was perfectly fine. Um, But then I was 37 weeks. And at 36 weeks, I believe, they start the OBGYN office. They start asking if you want to get a cervical check I asked my midwife about it and she's like well you know the cervical check isn't going to 
say, tell you like when um, the baby is going to arrive. So she kind of recommended against it. And I'm like, okay, 36 weeks, I won't get it. At 37 weeks, I, I was curious, you know, like, um, am I dilated at all? Like, I'm curious. So I decided to agree to the, to the cervical check. And that night, my, so first of all, that cervical check was really painful. Mm-hmm. According to my midwife, it's not supposed to be painful. Um, and that night, my water broke. I called my midwife and she asked me, did you have the cervix? I'm like, yeah. And she's like, okay, well, it's a possibility that that cervical check caused your water to break. Yeah. I, I had no idea that that, would, that was a possibility, right? So in a lot of ways, my body wasn't ready to have this baby. It was like mechanically, you know, like it was, in, I was pretty much induced. Right. And, and so I had terrible, terrible back labor. Um, that's when, so my baby, his position, his head position was back of his head was against my, um, pubic bone. Okay. And so it's really, really, really painful. So the midwife came over and, um, and I was in labor for like 24 hours and it comes to a point where the midwives, they have to transition you to the hospital. If your water has bro- been broken for 24 hours plus. Uh So (laughs) I transitioned to the hospital. I knew I was going to have to get a Pitocin to get labor go. And Mm -hmm. I also knew that Pitocin was going to make the contractions even like more more painful. Right. And then that's when they usually um, give you like an epidural, right? Well, if you decide you want to get a epidural, you can agree to one. I agreed to one. I was like, you know what? Like I'm already in excruciating pain. Like I've been dealing with this for 10 hours. Like just give it to me. Um, so they did. And thankfully, I was able to have my baby vaginally. Um, he was healthy. I was healthy. But I was really traumatized. <laughs> I bet. You know, like a lot of people say, well, as long as baby and mom are, are good, then, then, you know, everything's good. But it's not. I, was, I wasn't told about the negative impacts a cervical check could have. And also a cervical check does not tell you, does not give you any information about when baby is going to come. So why are we still offering it to women? Yeah. Yeah. So I was, I was really, you know, I was really traumatized from, from that experience. I, so for the next birth, so I got pregnant again and um, I knew that I needed to have the birth of my dreams. And so I did everything in my power, like absolutely everything in my power so that I could have that dream birth. And, you know, I got a chiropractor, I got an acupuncturist, I did Reiki during my pregnancy. Um, I, you know, I, did, I made sure I ate well, I even sat like I had the, you know, medicine ball that I would sit on, mm-hmm. um, instead of like a regular chair so that my baby could be in the best position. And I wouldn't have to suffer through that back labor that I did, that I had during the first. Mm-hmm. I mean, I did everything right. <laughs> and I, I advocated for myself really well with, um, my, my birth team. Cause I made sure that the birth team was going to be, you know, great and that they supported physiological birth they weren't going to need things that are not necessary <laughs> yeah, yeah um and and luckily we had I, I had the birth of my dreams I I had really I didn't really have pain throughout the birth it was a really fast birth um it was pretty much a, a total of five hours wow you know, from start to finish yeah and I was able to relax through every single contraction mm-hmm. until I could tell that it was time to go to the birth center. <laughs> got you. Yeah. And at the birth center, as soon as we got to the birth center, literally went then stepping into the door till I had my baby it was 30 minutes and I was able to have her oh, in the water. Completely natural. <laughs> completely natural. Yes. I was able to have her in the water tub and, you know, my baby was handed to, handed to me and I was just able to like just have that experience that I really wanted with my first. It was just amazing. Oh, you're literally giving me the chills. That is so beautiful. So you've had these two strong dichotomies in a birth experience. So you've had this like 
kind of mechanical induction that led to further complications, more of an emergency case. Your body wasn't fully ready to give birth and it was a pretty traumatic experience. Then you use that experience to leverage every resource possible to ensure it didn't happen again. And not only not happen again, but have a very beautiful experience of your dreams. So from that personal experience, Let's dive into how that led you to becoming a birth coach yourself. Yeah, so I, you know, I love looking things up about birth, like just learning everything about birth, postpartum, breastfeeding, like I love it. Um, I'm a nerd, birth nerd. (laughs) And, um, and I, I was finding that I was actually helping some of my friends, like, you know, like, oh, what should I do? like how should I prepare for birth and things like that and so I was helping them um and then I was in my maternity leave with my second baby Mm -hmm. when I realized that like I really wanted to have a business like I've always I've always had that desire in me like I, I wanted to have a business and owning my birth really inspired me to own like a life And this had been a desire that I've had for a long time. And I'm like, okay, I have six months of maternity leave. Let's just start now. Like what better time, but to start now. Mm. So I decided to uh, hire my first uh, business coach and she really helped me with like my mindset so that I can start this business. Cause I had a lot of like, you know, mindset drama blah about like, what are people going to think? What are my coworkers going to think? What are my friends, my family going to think if I start my freaking a birth coaching business when when I'm here like why am I even you know (laughs) I thought I I was having these thoughts that people are gonna have um so that was like so that's yeah that was the start of my birth coaching business yeah and speaking of that ownership that you also mentioned so it was really that moment of owning the birth experience that you were gonna have that gave you the confidence like ooh, I could own so much more like I really proved to myself um my own power and that equals now being able to follow through on becoming a business owner so Mm -hmm. like some people may not see that correlation but it's exactly directly in line I just wanted to say that like I've never felt as powerful as when like I have this freaking baby in my arms like I put I've been holding this I mean I've created this baby I've been nourishing it for nine months then I'm able to like birth this baby and then not only that I'm able to like nourish this baby you know with my body like it's just amazing I I really you know becoming a mother it just opened my eyes to how powerful we are as women I over the pandemic for whatever reason I also became super obsessed with understanding the woman's bodies in particular through the birth um, experience and the development of life in their womb and I've like gone through so many rabbit holes of like YouTube videos and like other resources. And one of my tias used to work for a store called the Pump Station. And they they also host like classes all about um, like uh, baby development, birthing, lactation consulting, like center for mothers. And so yeah. she's also very obsessed with that topic. And so now that I'm into it, her and I will just spend hours talking about how much of a miracle like life is. Like if you don't believe in God, yes. like research the body and what it does, especially like a woman's body, a mother's body. And like, you'll believe in God. Like there's just no other <laughs> like way to describe yes. it. Yeah, it just really opened my eyes to like what? like we're creators exactly what you're saying like you know we're I I, I wouldn't want to say God but I mean we are like technically like we're creating so much um and yeah so I that's why I love this topic so much (laughs) yeah and I can feel it I can like feel your passion for it and so can you explain what it is that you do as a birth coach and your role um in helping mothers Yeah, so my goal is to help women understand that they have all the power within themselves. Mm -hmm. 
I think I, I shared with you one of the statistics, but according to the National Institute for Health, 45% of new mothers experience traumatic births. And one of those contributors is um, health providers' actions and, and interactions with them. So I really want to help women find that power within them so that they can prevent any traumatic birth. I, I don't want women to go through what I went to. And that is why I share my experience through, through Instagram and through my like social media, because I really want women to know like that just because you're pregnant doesn't mean that you don't own your body anymore. Like mm -hmm. you own your body, you own, and, and you should be informed about, you know, the birth process um, so that you can advocate for yourself the best that you can and for your baby now, because you're not just, it's not just you anymore, right? It's your baby too. Um, and trauma, it really impacts your baby as well because um, postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety, it's really, really real. And you know, one of the contributors is birth trauma. So if we can just get ahead of all that by, you know, feeling into our power and really preparing for our births so that we have, you know, that amazing birth experience will help you in the long run as, as, a, as a mother. Yeah, I really love your explanation of that. And I do think that as a society, we're so used to believing that the solution, the answer is outside of ourselves. Like, oh, a doctor knows my body better than me. It's the belief until you right. are in a situation where you realize that they didn't know your body better than you. And that belief is then like come up against where you have to question it. And so I know that that's kind of a default belief that our society kind of accepts as true. And you're starting to realize that that isn't true. And you want other people to kind of wake up to that understanding that like the baby is in your body, you are in your body, you understand your body and your body's perfectly made to handle this without an external expert for this to happen. Exactly. Uh -huh. You are your expert, your body's expert and your baby's expert because your baby is you know within you. So can you share with us what your one-on-one -on -one coaching program consists of and how your role as a coach, um, the coach-client relationship and what exactly you do as a birth coach with them? Yeah, so my one-to-one -one, um, involves multiple different modalities. I use evidence research um, and Reiki, mindset work, breath work, all in order to help women feel a lot more calm and confident about their birth. Um, so what we do, some of the things that we do is we um, make sure that we have a birth plan for your birth. Um, that way you like have a better idea of what your birth um, can look like. So one of the things that I love to do with my clients is like figuring out what you would want to do if certain things were to happen so for example if um, a c-section had to happen like what are your preferences and the reason why i love to go into all the things that could happen mm -hmm. is because one it relieves you the anxiety of like oh my gosh like what if something bad happens because a lot of the times i feel like we don't know what could happen and if we go into birth more prepared um, with our preferences, then you'll be able to advocate more for yourself and for your baby. Um, the other thing that we do is that I help you find um, the birth team of your dreams. Mm -hmm. um, I can help you with that. Um, and uh, we practice relaxation techniques so that you are able to cope with the pain during birth. Mm -hmm. um, pain, birth does not have to be painful. It's all about how we prepare for it. Yes. And, uh, and what our mindset is surrounding pain. Um, and, and yeah, so it's, it's, the program is very tailored to each person um, and each person's journey. And um, I've been able to help women, you know, two years before they get pregnant, 
Um, I find that these women have a lot of anxiety. Yeah, I have a lot of anxiety surrounding birth. So we don't do a lot of mindset work, uh, breath work, um, and Reiki. Um, breath work, yeah. the reason why I love breath work is because it's a very somatic tool. Yes. It helps you, it helps you be in your body. And I find that um, a lot of my clients haven't had a chance to to really be in their body and birth forces you <laughs> completely to um, experience, you know, everything, <laughs> all the different sensations that are coming up. So, um, so I find that breath work really helps with that. Um, and then I also help clients in their postpartum phase, mm -hmm. um, really helping them process their birth. Um, some clients have traumatic um, experiences and I help them um, mm -hmm. just talk through those and um, heal from those too. Wow, that's incredible. I had I didn't realize like that you could start coaching them two years before they even get pregnant, but you're so right. Like we've had our whole lives of being conditioned to believe that birth is a very terrifying moment. Yes. And so to kind of uncondition and unlearn that belief and that understanding may take some time so that the anxiety and the fear isn't in your body when you get pregnant. <laughs> like Exactly. So yeah, breath work, if people aren't familiar with it, it's like a breathing practices that ignite your nervous system, right? And release a lot of your body's trauma through a somatic experience. That's my understanding of, of breath work. So yes. So breath work, Reiki, mindset. And like, I don't think people realize that when you say like mindset work, like it's genuinely upgrading every belief that you think is true. Mm -hmm. And that completely shifts your experience and the reality that you live in, in, in the life that you, that you like go through. So it's like a huge component of your entire pregnancy. And I also, I also love that you say, or I've seen on your website, you're like, when a baby is born, it's also a mother being born. Exactly. Yes. And so we want it to be the best experience possible because yeah, that it's your experience, you know, as a, as a mother, it's how you're going to start being able to provide um, that safe space for for your baby and so that's why i also believe um that we should start working on our nervous system like regulating our nervous system because mm -hmm. another thing that happens that i wasn't aware was how much like my nervous system influences my baby's nervous system right like they need yeah. to regulate i need to have my baby regulate and if i can't regulate myself <laughs> i'm not going to be a very good you know, I'm not going to be able to do a good job about it. Yeah. You have to know how to ground. Yes. Your baby is going through its first time feeling sadness or first time feeling frustration or anger. Like, I got you. You're safe. Let's, let's teach your body what safety feels like. Exactly. And the only way that babies are able to learn how to regulate it's, is through you. Mm -hmm. It's really, really important to uh, and I love like hearing your baby. <laughs> just so beautiful. Yeah, now I'm trying to regulate her too. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, one question that I like to ask the people that I interview is how is it that your engineering background shows up or influences Aww. your birth coaching business or um, like the other spiritual, natural, holistic modalities that you incorporate, um, or like how your STEM skills show up in your birth coaching business. So like my STEM, I see that my STEM side of me as the masculine side of me. It, um, it gives me like a good like vessel. <laughs> in which like my femininity can flow into yeah. um, and, the, and the way and like how I can explain it is that like for example my career it helps fund all of these amazing things that I'm that I'm doing right like um getting coached you know starting my business yeah um like all of these 
beautiful feminine things that I'm into, my career is funding that. Yeah. Does that make sense? It's providing the opportunity for you to be in your feminine. Yes. Yeah. Now, the last question that I'll ask as we wrap up is, what advice would you give to the other engineering moms to be or the current engineering moms? I think my advice would be to just do what is best for you. And only you know what is best. You're the best advocate for yourself. So that that's the thing that I've been learning the most in my in my journey. Mm -hmm. And I think um yeah, I think this is really important. Perfect. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Jess, for giving us your time, for sharing your personal experience. You've covered so many incredible topics that I know people can learn so much about. So everyone should know that I'm including Jess's Instagram, YouTube, website, links to her coaching program in the description box. So reach out, talk to her, learn from her. And thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, okay. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate nice it. Nice to meet you, Jess. Bye. Yeah, nice to meet you too. Yeah, okay, bye. And so it is. Thank you for tuning in to the Engineer Podcast with Jen Reynoso. I hope you're leaving here feeling a lot more aligned to take inspired action. Now be sure that you stay connected and never miss the exact episode that was meant for you by subscribing to the podcast wherever you listen to it, as well as subscribing to the Engineer email list. Go to www.engineerpodcast.com. That's engineer with a J-E-N and you know exactly why. I hope to hear from you soon, Stemmy. Bye for now.